Hi all, in this video we're going to take a look at Trig Word Problem Fun, Magic Seahorses and Javelina. Problem number one, if you've spent time in Disneyland, you'll know that lines can be long. The lines of Pirates of the Caribbean is 90 minutes. Oof. But you pick up a fast pass that says come back in 35 minutes. Okay, I like that. Uh, you are at the Pirates of the Caribbean ride when you decide to walk south 43 east south 43 east for 3.75 minutes to get to Main Street uh, you spend 10 minutes in the store watching them make caramel apples that look like Mike Wazowski from Monsters Inc and then you decide to walk north 47 degrees east to It's a Small World. Okay, north 47 degrees east for how long? It takes you nine minutes. Nine. And this is 47. And these are alternate interior angles. So this is 43. And so there's my right triangle. Okay, so here you are at It's a Small World, and you need to get back to the Pirates of the Caribbean. Right now we've seen it's taken 3.75 plus 10, I'm sorry, plus 9, plus the 10 minutes you spent in the store. Uh, and you have to be back in 35 minutes. And we want to go on this route. So I'm going to draw one more compass rose. And I'm going to say, all right, I need to head south this many degrees west to get back to Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, well, let's think about this for a minute. I see parallel lines. This red one and this blue one are parallel. And because of that, I know that this angle over here must also be 47. And that's part of my bearing angle. But another part of my bearing angle is this theta. And this theta is inside this right triangle, whose side lengths are 3.75 minutes and 9 minutes. So... I need two things. I need to know how long is this in minutes, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find that, uh, but I also need to know what this angle is so I can figure out the bearing on which to get back. Okay, so let's do the angle first. We know that the tangent of theta is 3.75 over 9. And so theta would be the inverse tangent of 3.75 over 9. If I pull out my calculator and make sure it's set on degrees, inverse tangent, 3.75 divided by 9, I get 22.61986. So theta equals 22.6. 2 degrees plus the 47 we had before and so I get this bearing of south 69.620 degrees west I'm heading south and going to the west that many degrees that whole angle there not just the 47 not just theta but theta plus 47 so we have to find our theta first and then add that alternate interior angle to it. Great, so that's part A. Part A says on what bearing. And part B says figure out if you'll make it back in time. So we need to find this distance or this time because it's really a time and not a distance. And we'll use Pythagorean theorem to do that. 3.75 squared plus 9 squared equals t squared. And so with my calculator, and I take the square root, and I get 9.75. 
t equals 9.75 minutes. Okay, so this is 9.75 minutes, 9 minutes, 3.75 minutes, and don't forget you spent 10 minutes at the store. So, let's see how that adds up. 9.75 plus 9 plus 3.75 plus 10 minutes in the store gives us 32 and a half minutes. Well, if we need to be back in 32 minutes, we can spend no more than two and a half minutes at It's a Small World before we have to walk back. All right, so I guess we'll be able to get back there in time, provided we don't stay at It's a Small World after all. A song written by the Sherman Brothers, who wrote all the songs for, amongst other things, Mary Poppins. Okay, number two. Ooh, Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla creates a path of destruction from his cave outside Hiroshima on the bearing of South 26 East. South 26 degrees East for 18 miles and then turns because he sees Mothra and flies to him on a bearing of South 64 west for 30 miles and then uh, after their epic battle on what bearing does Mechagodzilla need to go to return to its cave okay so Mechagodzilla is here having battled Mothra and then needs to go back to its cave here. And I know this is 26 degrees. I know there's a right angle here. So I know that this must be 64 degrees. This is 64. There's a right angle here. So this is 26. And 26 plus 64 gives me this right angle. Ta-da, I have my right triangle. Okay, but we're asked uh, on what bearing, and so I think to go north this many degrees east is what Mechagodzilla needs to do. And we know, because of alternate interior angles, and I'll do this in red, that we've got parallel lines cut by a transversal so we know that this angle is 64 degrees because this one is 64 degrees. And here, I see my theta inside my right triangle, but my bearing angle is this green angle. So I think what I need to do here is take that 64 degree angle, subtract theta to get the bearing angle home. Okay, again, I want this green angle to get home. That whole angle is 64. It's made up of the bearing angle and the angle inside our right triangle. So I need to find the angle inside this right triangle where this is 18 and this is 30 in order to figure out this angle, subtract it from 64 to get my bearing angle. Notice the alternate interior angles were really important here. I could figure out my bearing angle home without using one of these alternate interior angles. Okay, so what do we know? We know tangent theta equals 18 over 30. So theta equals tangent inverse of 18 over 30. You're welcome to reduce that to two-fifths, uh, but since I'm going to be putting it into my calculator, it doesn't really need to be reduced. Uh, 18 divided by 30. Okay, so 30.963756. Theta equals 30 30.963756.53 is our angle in degrees. We want to subtract that from 64 degrees to get our green bearing angle. 
So 64 minus theta will be 64 minus theta will be our bearing angle. 64 minus that angle. 33.036 degrees. 33.036 degrees. So I want to head north 33 degrees to the east. Pay attention to these letters. A lot of people get this number correct on the next assessment and don't get these letters correct. Um, be careful about that. Okay, number three. If you want, uh, oh, from one point on the beach, you sight a magical seahorse floating at sea north 20 east. Okay, so let's draw a picture where we're standing on the beach and we see a magical seahorse north 20 degrees east. So somewhere on this line is a magical seahorse. You walk one kilometer down the beach. So this is one kilometer. And you do another compass rose. And this time you see uh, this time you see the same magical seahorse north 48 west. 48. And we could draw a little compass rose here. This would be 48. And this would be 20. And so I don't have a right angle there. Ooh. Well, isn't that a thing? But I wonder if that's going to be a problem for us. Let's see what the questions are. Um, what's the shortest distance from the beach to the magical seahorse? Well, I remember there's the magical seahorse. I remember learning in geometry that the shortest distance from a point to a line is along the perpendicular that connects them. So that's my distance. And I know that this whole distance is one kilometer. Um, I think I'm going to call this amount x, and therefore I'm going to call this one minus x over here. This is one minus x, and this is x. So, and this is 20 degrees, so this must be 70 degrees. And this is 48 degrees, so this must be 42 degrees. And I see two right triangles here. I see this one with the 70 degree angle, and I see this one with the 42 degree angle. So can we build some uh, trig equations? We've got opposite and adjacent here. So I think I can say tangent of 70 equals d over x. And over here, I can say tangent of 42 equals d over uh, 1 minus x. So 1 minus x times tan 42 equals d. And over here, when I multiply both sides by x, x tan 70 equals d. Since both of these equal d, I can set these two pieces equal to each other. And over here, I think I want to distribute. So I'm going to have x tan 70 equals 1 times tan 42 minus x times tan 42. And I'll add x tan 42 to both sides. So I'll get x tan 70 plus x tan 42 equals tan 42. Over here, I notice I can factor out an x. Tan 70 plus tan 42. 42. And to find x, I'm going to divide both sides by the stuff in parentheses. So tan 42 divided by all this stuff. Remember when you type this into your calculator to use an appropriate number of parentheses, tangent 42, close parentheses, divided by 
everything in the denominator needs to be in parentheses, divided by 10, 70, don't forget to close those parentheses, plus 10, 42, close those parentheses, and close the denominator parentheses. And I end up with 0.2468. Isn't that an interesting number? So x equals 0.2468 kilometers. That's this part. We walked all the way down here, and it says how far back do you need to walk. So we want 1 minus x. We want 1 minus x. So let's do 1 minus that number. And I come up with 0 0.753. 0 0.753. Oh, that's part B. I'm sorry. 0 0.753 kilometers is how far back down the beach we need to go. And what are we looking for? What is the shortest distance from the beach to the map? Oh, so we want to know D. Well, we know X, and we know that X1070 is equal to D. So this is part B and part A. D equals X1070. And here's our X value. So I'm going to plug that in there. Um, so that times 1070, point, and the D equals 0.678 kilometers. Pretty close. You can definitely see that magical seahorse. Enjoy your day at the beach. Okay, so the shortest distance is D x1070. We use these two triangle uh, equations as a system to solve for x. We plug x back in. You could plug x in over here if you wanted to to find d. I just thought this would be a little easier. And then we needed to find out how far back down the beach we needed to walk. That was 1 minus x, so we took our x value and subtracted it from 1 to get this. Okay, number 4. Uh, the pedal sprocket wheel on your bike has a radius of 4 inches. Okay, we've got a pedal sprocket, 4 inches. Um, and it turns 1 radian every 4 seconds. Ooh, that's an angular velocity. Uh, the sprocket is mounted on a wheel with a radius of 13 inches. I think it's supposed to say the sprocket is connected to a wheel with a radius of 13 inches. We have this rear wheel back here with a radius of 13, and these are connected. Um, what is the linear velocity of the bike? Okay, well, I know that linear velocity is radius times angular velocity. I'm going to take this angular velocity and multiply it by my radius. 4 times 1 over 4, and I get 1 inch per second. That's the linear velocity of the bike, one inch per second. And the linear velocity of this is the same as the linear velocity of this wheel over here. Linear velocities are the same regardless of where you are on the bike. The bike goes down the street and the wheels stay the same distance apart. What's the angular velocity of the rear sprocket? Oh. You know it helps to read. There's a rear sprocket that this pedal sprocket is connected to. This only has a 2 inch radius. Okay, so we know that this one has the same linear velocity as this one. V equals R omega, and I'm going to say omega 2 for 2 inches. So our radius there is 2. Our Linear velocity is 1. 1 equals 2 omega. 
and I get 1 over 2, and those would be radians per second, equals the omega of the 2-inch rear sprocket. Now, what about the 13-inch rear wheel? What about the 13-inch rear wheel? Well, same formula, r times omega 13. We'll plug in our 1, we'll plug in our 13, and we'll multiply by omega, and we'll get 1 over 13 radians per second equals the angular velocity of the rear wheel. Great. That wasn't so bad. Okay. Um, let me just make a note about changing that to, 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 to do this pedal sprocket. The chain links, oh, there it is. The chain links this pedal sprocket to a rear wheel sprocket. And this rear wheel sprocket is mounted on a wheel with a radius of 13. I just hadn't read all the words. Okay, number five. Let's take a look at that. Number five says... A scientist took off from his science vessel in a helicopter when he saw his partner at an angle of depression of 8 degrees. Okay, so here's the science vessel. Here's the helicopter. And 8 degrees angle of depression. There's the partner. Um, ooh, and a polar bear at an angle of depression of 5 degrees. Um, well, I can draw that in, can't I? Can I fit that in here? Just. So that's 5 degrees, which means that this is 5 degrees, and this is... 8 degrees. Do we know how high up? Your altimeter reads 250 meters. That's the bear. That's your partner. Uh-oh. I wonder if your partner is going to be safe. How far is the polar bear from your partner? Let's call that distance D. And let's call this distance back to the science vessel, x. So we can make our two triangles here. We can make the little one with 250, x, and 8 degrees. And we can make the bigger one with 5 degrees, still 250, but here, x plus d. It's this whole side length. Okay, and what tricky equations can we write here? Well, again, it looks like opposite and adjacent. Tangent of 8 equals 250 over x. So x is 250 over tan 8. And then here, I can write tan 5 equals 250 over x plus d, and therefore x plus d equals 250 over tan 5. Well, I know what x is, and I can plug that in, and so I'll be able to solve for d. I'll take this, and I'll subtract x, or this, from both sides to get d equals 250 over tan 5 minus 250 over tan 8. 250 over tan 5 minus 250 over tan 8. And I get 1078.67, 1000. And that's D. Six seven D eight point six seven one kilometers apart. Well that's great. I like it when the polar bear is a kilometer away from my buddy. 
Um, next it says, if your partner can run at 18 kilometers per hour and the bear can run faster at 22 kilometers per hour, will your partner make it back to the research vessel in time? Show your work that leads to your conclusion. Actually, the story is based on, on a true events with a Norwegian science group. Um, and so it's very much a cautionary real world tale. Um, let's take a look and see. Um, this distance is 1.078671 kilometers. You can run at 18 kilometers per hour. And uh, that distance that you, or your partner rather, needs to run is x. And I remember that distance equals rate times time. So the time is going to be the distance back divided by the rate. Our distance back is x divided by 18. Now note that these are kilometers. Right now these are going to be in meters. So I'm going to need to convert that x that I get to some sort of meters like I did over here, uh, from meters to kilometers like I did over here. So let's find out what 250 over tan 8 is. 250 divided by tan 8. And we get 1778.842. 1.0 eight four two kilometers divided by eighteen kilometers per hour and this will tell us how many hours it'll take for you your partner to run back so if i divide that by a thousand and then i divide that by eighteen i get point oh nine eight eight hours point oh nine eight eight hours um, if I multiply that by 60, it's 5.929 minutes. Now, how long will it take the bear to run from where the bear is, 1.7 kilometers, or 1.07 kilometers from you, plus that same distance? Uh, that we found this distance. So this plus this is what the bear has to run. Um, and so the bear time is 1.778842 plus 1.078671 divided by bear runs faster at 22 kilometers per hour. Okay, so we're going to take 1.778842 plus 1.078671, and we're going to divide that sum by 22, and we get 0.129888 hours. Uh, that's looking good for the, uh, the human form times 60, or 7.79 minutes. Well, assuming your partner doesn't slow down, uh, they'll make it back to the ship alive. Uh, phew. Uh, in real life, actually, uh, the scientist in the helicopter watched their buddy get eaten by the polar bear. Um, so I'm glad this story turned out a little happier. Um, go Norway. Okay, on the back, problem number six. And there's only nine problems to do here, so let's take a look at six. Uh, you're on line for the Matterhorn at Disneyland. Uh, that line varies sinusoidally as you're in the park. There's no one in the line when the park opens at 8 a.m. So I'm going to say that 8 a.m. t equals zero. Uh, there's no one in line. Line length equals zero. And then uh, there's no one in line. At 4 p.m. the ride is closed. Now, 4 p.m., there's four hours to noon, and there's four more hours from noon to four. So this will be t equals eight. The line also equals zero. So I guess we have our two low points for our line, our 
our longest line must be halfway in between. Uh, let's see what it says here. Um, uh, the maximum line weight you saw today was 70 minutes. Okay. 70 minutes line max. And so a line of zero, this is zero minutes. We're talking about a wait time here. So I think my graph starts at a minimum at zero with zero minutes of waiting. At noon, we get to our maximum of 70 minutes. And then we come back down again to our minimum four comma zero. Four, sorry, eight comma zero. So what graph do we see here? Well, I don't know where the midline is, and it starts low, so I'm going with a negative cosine. I know that uh, D is the high Y plus the low Y divided by 2, and A is the high Y minus D. Um, I also see low point to low point is the period. And so b will be 2 pi over that period, 2 pi over 8, or pi over 4. Our c value is 0 since we're starting at 0 with a negative cosine. If we want to start with a positive cosine and start here, we'd use a c value of 4. So my model then is l of t equals 35 cosine pi over 4 uh, t minus 0 plus 35. Okay, uh, that was part A, build the model as a function of time. Use your model to determine the wait time at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Well, 4 p.m. was 8, and 10 p.m. is 6 hours after that. So 8 plus 6 t equals 14. So I want to put this model into my calculator and I want to plug this in to see what line length I get at 10 p.m. Remember we're doing a trig graph so we want our mode to be in radians. Don't forget this now and don't forget this when you take the assessment. Do our quest over this material. Oh and I forgot the negative. Okay, so negative 35 cosine pi divided by 4, x minus 0, plus 35. Don't forget to close both parentheses there. And I'm not going to graph this. I want to know an input. So I'm going to come over to the table, and I'm going to type in 14. And I get what looks like 35 minutes, the line length, 35 minutes at 10 p.m. And there's part B. Part C, it says you can't wait in line. If you won't wait in line for longer than 20 minutes, are there any times after 7 p.m. where the line will be short enough for you? Uh, my wife will not wait in lines, and um, she says, I'm only willing to wait 20 minutes. So, is there a time after 10 p.m.? Well, we know 10 p.m. is 14, so maybe we should take a look at this graph from the opening. Um, they close at midnight, they open at 8 a.m., 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eight a.m. to eight p.m. is twelve hours, and then eight p.m. to midnight. Oh, so I need T equals 16 is midnight when they close. So I want my X max to be 16. Okay, and line length 0 
to 70 maximum line length in steps of 10. I also want to graph the line y equals 20, a line length of 20. So there's my line length of 20. Here's our sine, so I mean our, our uh, cosine curve. And this is 8 a.m. and this is midnight. And this is 4 p.m. when they close the Matterhorn because of the Yeti. Um, and so this point here, after 10 p.m. No, is it after 10 p.m.? Uh, you won't wait. Is there any time after 7 p.m.? Okay, this is 4 p.m. This was noon. These were four hours apart. 4 p.m. This is 8 p.m. So 7 p.m. is about here. So I'm looking for a time after that where the line length is less than 20. Well, no, the line gets longer, the line gets shorter, and then finally after this moment in time, the line finally does get shorter than 20 minutes. So let's find out when that is. Second, calculate, intersect, and bring our cursor close to that point of intersection. And hit enter, enter, enter. And it looks like we get 14.56392 t equals 14.56392. Well, that was 10 p.m., and this is some number of minutes after. Let's take a look at what that would be. 0.56392 times 60 minutes in an hour, and I get after 10.33.8352. So after 10.33, maybe after 10.34, um, we know that the line length will be shorter than 20 minutes, and you won't have to wait so long to get on to the Matterhorn. That was problem number six. Let's take a look at problem number seven. Javelina population in the Santa Catalina is very sinusoidally with the month. In January, the average herd population is a maximum of 20. Zero, 20. Well, I guess January we often say is 1. And it goes down to its minimum of, of 14 in July. So 7, 14. And back up here, 13, 20 because we know this varies sinusoidally, and so we're expecting some sort of sine curve here. Um, how did I know this is 13? Well, I know the period of one year is 12 months. 12 plus 1 gives me 13 here. Okay, so this is January to January, and there's the July in between. These numbers are the numbers of Havelina that we have. What's the population in March? Well, I think I need to write the equation of this. So D would be 20 plus 14 divided by 2, which will be 17. A will be I Y minus D. Uh, it starts high, so I'm going with positive cosine. Now, uh, period is 12 months. So B is 2 pi over the period, or pi over 6. And C, since we're starting here at our high point at 1, C is 1. So then we've got um, population equals 3 cosine pi over 6, T minus 1, close two parentheses, plus 17. 17 is therefore the average herd size. Okay, let's see what we asked. What's the population in March? Okay, so this is January. January is 1, February is 2, March will be 3. So I want to plug a 3 into this function. So let's type in this function, delete, delete, 3 cosine, pi over 6, x minus 1, plus 17. 
3 cosine pi over 6 x minus 1 plus 17. Don't forget to close those two parentheses. And da! Oh well, 3 cosine pi divided by 6 x minus 1. Too many parentheses over here. Plus 17. Okay, having inadvertently erased and retyped it in, now it looks like this. I go over to the table and I type in a 3 for March and I see the population will be 18.5. Part A, 18.5. Ooh, baby. Uh, Havelina in March. Oh, wait, that's kind of sad. There used to be 20. And now there's only 18.5. Yikes, there must be some predators. Or maybe little javelinas didn't make it. When will the population be 16? Well, that 16 is an output, so I need to go over to my graph and graph 16. I want to be smart about this and change my viewing window. I still have the viewing window from the, McDonald from the uh, Matterhorn problem. Um, now we're going from 1 to 13. Uh, and our low, we found out, was 14, and our high was 20. And we can go in steps of one. I like graphing these also uh, with my known values uh, in window, because I want to see that we just fit. If the graph just fits in this window, 1 to 13, and 14 to 20, um, I should be able to see on the graphing calculator as I do one full period. Now we're looking for when the population will be 16. This is the line y equals 16 and I see two times when the population will be 16. So let's find those. Second calculate intersect. Enter, enter, enter. And so that says 9.35. OK, so that's September. And 0.35, 30 days has September. That would be September 10th, but halfway through the day. And then if we graph and do second calculate intersect, to find this other point over here, we'll know when the other time population is exactly 16. And that turns out to be 4.648. 4 is April, 30 days half September, April, so this is also point six four eight times thirty and I get April nineteenth. Okay, those are our two times. Uh, and that was problem seven. Let's take a look at problem eight of nine. Um, all of these by the way are good uh, good test questions. There's nothing unreasonable so far that we've come to except maybe I needed to read the words a little more carefully on one or two of them. So don't forget to actually read the problems. Okay, a regular dodecagon is inscribed in a circle. You'll remember that a dodecagon, dodecagon has 12 sides. It's a decagon plus do, 10 plus 2. Um, so we know n equals 12. Okay, what are we looking for? Find the area of the dodecagon if the side length is 4. So I'm imagining a dodecagon. I'm not going to try and draw it. I'm just going to say, hey, the whole side length is 4 inches. So this must be 2 inches. Here's my apatha. We had a formula for finding theta, 360 over 2n, where n is the number of sides, 
we've got 12 sides, so 360 over 24. 360 divided by 24, I get 15 degrees. So that's 15 degrees. Now, I'm in degrees again, so I better go to my mode and switch to degrees. So, tangent 15 equals apothem over 2, so apothem equals 2 tan 15. If you have your calculator left in radians when you do this, you're going to get the wrong answer. Please make sure for graphing problems you're in radians, for right triangle problems you're in degrees. 2 tan 15 equals an apothem of 0.535898 is the apothem. And we know the formula for area is one-half perimeter times apothem. So that's going to be one-half perimeter. We want 12 times 4-inch sides. There's 12 sides. Each of them is 4 inches. So this is my perimeter. Times the apothem, 0 0.535898, 3,8,4,9. So it looks like I'm doing 48 times 1 half, which is 24 times the apothem. So let's take our apothem and multiply by 24, and we'll get 12.862 inches squared. There's part A. Part B, find the area of the dodecagon if the radius is 4 inches. So now we're saying not that this is 4 inches, but that this is 4 inches. And I don't know how long that is. I know that these are the same and that a side length is two of those x's. So what trig equations can I use now? Well, to find the apothem, I look, that's now the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So cosine of 15 is apothem over 4. Did I do that right? Oh, I did not do that right. Damn. You know, it's good to catch your mistakes. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, and I did adjacent over opposite. Let's go fix that before we move on with the problem. Okay, so this is 2 over apothem. Apothem, therefore, is 2 over 10, 15. 2 divided by 10, 15 is much better. I wondered why the number for the apothem was so small. Apothem equals 7.464. 101615. Remember, our area is still one half times the perimeter times the apothem. So I'm going to multiply that by 24, and I get 179.138 inches squared. That feels much better for part A. Okay. Dodecagon, 12 sides. 2 times 12 is 24. 360 divided by 24 is 15. Tangent opposite was 2. Apothem was unknown. That's correct. We got that. One half perimeter. I like it. Okay, what's next? Okay, so then we were saying second problem. We don't know these lengths. We know this is four. And we were saying that now, in order to find the apothem, we're going to use cosine because this is the adjacent side. That's what clued me into it. I had made a mistake over here. Uh, and so we know that 4 cosine 15 is the apothem. 
And we know that this half of a side length can be found with opposite and hypotenuse. So the sine of 15 degrees is x over 4. So 4 sine or 4 sine 15 degrees is x. Now that's not a side length. The side length is 2 x's. So that's 8 sine 15. Uh, and we really need the perimeter, and the perimeter is the number of sides times the side length. So we've got 12 sides, so we want this times 12. So 12 times 8 sine 15 is the perimeter. And here's our apothem. And we want 1 half this times this. So 1 half of 4 is 2. I'm going to type in 2 cosine 15 times 12 times 8 sine of 15. Uh, 1 half perimeter times apothem. Yes, and I did half the apothem. Wow. That's... That's very interesting. What mode am I in? I'm in degrees. Good. Really? It's exactly 48 inches squared. Wow. All right, I got to do it the longer way. One half perimeter, 12 times 8, sum 15 times. 4 cosine 15. 1 half perimeter times apathy. 48. Wow, that's kind of cool. Okay, uh, but that's a much smaller area than our previous area, huh? Um, and that's because this, when this, this is our x value, 4 sine 15, 4 sine 15, we get only 1 inch instead of the previous 2 inches. So we have a much smaller right triangle when this is 4 than when this is 4. Okay. Um, part C says, can the radius of the circle and the apothem ever be the same length? Can this ever be as long as that? Well, this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and so it always has to be the longest side. But I do notice that if I increase the number of sides, this angle gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So, right, because if I have a triangle, then this angle is 60, and if I have a square, then this angle is 45, and if I have a pentagon, then this angle is 36. So I've gone from 60 to 45 to 36, and now I'm down to 15. That angle is getting smaller and smaller the more and more sides I've got, which takes this and brings it closer and closer to the apothem. So if we reduce this side length, by having more and more sides, the sides will get tinier and tinier, and so we would have smaller angle and smaller angle and smaller angle, and we can see with each of these smaller angles a smaller and smaller side length. Okay, how many sides would the polygon have? Well, I think if I have to take this and turn it into this, this has to head towards zero. And that means I'm going to have to have an infinite number of sides. And that's in fact what uh, we'll do in calculus is say that a polygon with an infinite number of sides, not just a lot of sides, a lot of sides kind of looks like a circle. But an infinite number of sides 
is a circle because then the radius and the apothem will be the same. Okay, don't worry about answering a question like C on our quest, nothing that hard, just something to think about as some of you move to calculus. Okay, last problem. China has been exerting more political influence in the East and South China Seas by building a larger navy. They recently started building submarines and in 2012 commissioned their first aircraft carrier. China says it is merely trying to recover lost territory, either from before or during World War II. Some analysts suggest that China is making a play for fishing and oil and natural gas reserves under the sea. China recently started to deploy Coast Guard cutters to discourage ships from other country out of the China Sea, South China Sea, Philippine Marines are living on an abandoned World War II vessel grounded on one of the atolls claimed by the Philippines and China. By the way, Philippines and China were on the same side during World War II. Uh, the Marines see a cutter 26 miles away at a bearing of north 20 east. Okay, so here are the Marines. And north 20 east they see a Coast Guard cutter 26 miles away. So that Coast Guard cutter is passing before them, and we would like to know how close it's going to get. What is the closest distance the Coast Guard cutter gets to the Marines? Well, this is a pretty straightforward cosine equation. Once we can figure out how to draw the picture, we're not looking for how far this travels before it's right in front of them. We're looking for what is the shortest distance between the point and the line. So we want to know this. That's the adjacent, that's the hypotenuse, and that's the angle. So I'm doing cosine of 26 equals d, oops, cosine of 20 equals d over 26. So d equals 26 cosine 20. I've got degrees, so I'm going to make sure my calculator is set in degrees. 26 cosine 20, and I get 24.432 miles. Great. Well, there you go. Uh, nine test-worthy questions for us. I hope this cleared up some of your questions, and I hope the rest of the day is great for you. Take care, everyone.